And so, Chris, was your was your father tall or short? Well, I don't think that's relevant, sir. Let's let's talk about something else. But I'm you. trying to understand. It doesn't matter. I don't want to talk about that. Move on to something else. I know, else. but let me just say this to you. It doesn't I, matter. Keep, keep my family out of it, please. But what I'm saying, okay. I'm trying to understand what brought up. Uh, sir, I'm going to tell you once more nicely. Do not mention my parents. Do you uh, understand me? Uh, Chris Morgan is here. And some of you know him as the bagel boss. And he has gone viral uh, thanks to a video of him. Um, losing it at a New York bagel shop. And I wanted to talk to Chris, very interesting guy. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Happy man history, Mark, Chris. Thank you. How are you today, sir? All is well. And so, Chris, I heard that uh, you can't use the name Bagel Boss anymore. Is that true? That is correct, sir. And why is that? Uh, you're just basically, uh, you know, just, you know, legalities and stuff uh, like that. And, uh, you know, we didn't create the name. The media did. But hence, just to squash that quickly is just, you know, we came up with the, an alternative name. And, uh, yes, we cannot use that name anymore. Are you giving out the alternative name yet? It, yeah, the new name is already out. Yes, it's on the Angry Bagel Guy, which is the Instagram. Amazing. And, and so and my, company, and my company is called Great Sauce, like pizza sauce, media. Amazing. That's nice. Congratulations, Chris. Right. So when that well. incident happened in that bagel shop that morning or that day in New York, were you surprised at the outcome of everything? Absolutely. Absolutely. I just wanted breakfast, man. <laughs> 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 That's it. Um, and so women, how tall are you, Chris? I'm five feet. And so women tease you about your height. Did that happen when you were when you were a teenager yeah, as well? Of course. Yeah, you know, all kinds of different stuff, you know, growing up. And so are you are you really insecure about your height or it just Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, over the last couple of months I'm uh, strangely enough that you know, either being manipulated or lied to or whatever, what any kind of form of uh, hurt I've received or rejection has actually made me even stronger than ever i'm in a better state of mind i am now right uh than i was a month ago uh, especially a large part of that is due to the rejection which built me up to not care anymore and also uh my the great team that i work for has constantly helped me and talked to me and they've acted not only like you know my agent to help me get gigs but also they they've acted like my therapists and they taught me a lot about the business so you know i i, I anybody would have been thrown into this new like I did. I'm like, oh, wow, they all like me. And then when you learn, most of them are just out to ride a cloud thing. And, you know, I didn't know about any of this stuff. I mean, uh, so they basically, from a month ago, uh, they taught me a lot, and, and I've handled myself better. I've had friends that have verified that. And, yeah, it's literally through rejection and hurtful words. I mean, I've been, I've been nice to them, like some of the uh, particular people that they know who they are, and they would still talk to me like dirt and uh, – now it's just like I, I, I truly am mentally there. It took me a long time to actually – that's what it took me to go, I, I don't care no more. I really don't care because I have friends, I have hobbies, and I have a great team I work for, and uh, which I'm insanely grateful for. And I don't, I don't care about all that other stuff no more with the whole female rejection thing. I don't, I don't, I don't care. So, so what happened that morning in the shop? Why did the fight what, – what happened? We didn't see the very beginning of what happened. What happened that day? Well, there were some things that had happened before that were leading up personal things in my life that anybody would have been uh, gone berserk over. But uh, so I was having a bad day. I lost one client in my cleaning business. They screwed me over nine hundred dollar week account. That was the main big thing. So I really didn't get over that yet. So then this was maybe two or three weeks later. I went in there. I ordered something. Uh, it took like three or four times to me to tell the woman, and she didn't really understand. Then she's she's going up to her coworkers and smirking, biting the lip, you know, and then she's cooking my breakfast with the spatula, and then she's doing this with her hand and giggling and looking at me, and then I said, you know, what's your problem? And, you know, I had two other instances before where I'm in other stores, and I'm trying to get a coffee in the middle of the night on my way to work, and they're asking me, oh, how tall are you? The guy, the guy at the cashier, I'm like, are you serious? So after those two incidences happened, now came the bagel thing. So I'm just fed up with it all, plus all the other stuff that was happening in my life. So I'm like, why do you got to, why do you got to, you know, just do that? Just cook my breakfast. What's your problem? You know, and then <laughs> yeah. that's when, uh, that's when uh, 
everybody behind me decides to get involved in my business like they've done all my life. And I just got fed up with, like, who are you to get my business? And that's when you're not God, my father, my boss. It just spewed out, like, like get out of my face. You're nothing to me. You know, like, who are you? And that was basically <laughs> it. So, and the guy I'm, I'm that. Just done taking, I'm just done. I got, I, I, I you know, the boiling uh, pot of water spilt the lid on the floor, and, and it was, it was, I was done. I'm, I fed up. Did so, you ever get your bago that day? Yeah, I ended up smacking it at a lady's hand. And she said, you know what? I paid for it. I think I will take it. I swooped it off the ground. <laughs> Like, why am I going to give them $5? I didn't even eat the bagel, so I grabbed it. Yeah. That's right. And so the guy that physically attacked you, you guys fell on the floor there. Did you? What happened to him? Did you sue him, or what, what happened with that? No. No, I never sued him. But it's not, isn't it illegal for someone to physically attack you for that for no apparent reason? Yeah, I mean, reason? technically it is. You're right. But, I mean, the, the difference is, is it's only considered, I think, harassment. But once they once – they, you have a bruise or a cut. Now it's considered assault. Did he apologize? Not to me or anybody. No. Amazing. And so, yeah. when did you? When did this become your height thing and girls become an issue? At what age in life? Uh, I would say it was. I, I guess I would say maybe around. I don't know. Maybe around tenth grade ish or something like that. And probably around like probably around like 1990ish, 10th grade. Yeah. And so yeah. were you trying to date at that time but could not get a date? Well, as as the years went on, once I got out of high school, like for example, last year I went on like 15 different dates with girls through dating sites, but most of them didn't work out or there was no chemistry or whatever. But um but yeah, I mean uh like like in the 20s like I, there was a girl I dated for 2 years and but um yeah, I would say through most of my 20s and uh, most of the, th and like half of the thirties were like the roughest. And once I turned 35, like more started coming around, yeah. but you know, not, not, not models or anything or not frequently, but, but yeah, it didn't start till maybe around 35 ish, but yeah. And so did the girls say, well, I'm not dating you because of your hype or you thought oh, yeah. that. Some of them, yeah. Some of them said it. Some said you should be uh, dead because of that. And that really, you know, one girl one time just said to me, oh, you look like you have the type of face I like to slap. I said, what? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I'm like, come say that to my face. I dare you. You know, <laughs> you know of course, you know, they, they act one way to your face. And then when they hide behind a stupid little camera, that that's when you see their skeletons come out, you know. And they don't have the guts to say it to my face, especially when I've been nice to them. And they have no reason to do that to me. It's like, Dad, come and say that to my face. They never did. Never. Are you... Um, are you personally insecure about your height? Does that bother yeah, you? I that. Yeah, but now not as much so because as I explained to you before and everything is gone, I, I'm in a much better place mentally now where I, I really don't, I really don't care anymore. I don't care. Period. I'm, I'm focusing now on my career and uh, maximizing on whatever we can do. And that's it. That, that stuff with the women thing and dating is on the back burner. If it comes along, if it does, if it doesn't, I don't care anymore. I don't care. It's that simple. And so do you hope one day to be married and have children and no, all that? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe like, you know, just if I meet the right one and maybe, you know, date a while. And then if you know her for years, maybe live with her. But I, I don't want to get married again. No, no way. Now that you're famous, are women hitting on you more? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, the first week was, was berserk in the bars and even going into Penn Station. We had a whole frat. Young guys on a football team. We got up to the escalator. I mean, it was a crowd. I mean, I had four or five people with me that had to control it just to make sure nothing happened. It was it was nuts. It was like Elvis showing up. It was crazy. And so, Chris, was your was your father tall or short? Well, I don't think that's relevant, sir. Let's let's talk about something else. But right? I'm trying to understand. It doesn't matter. I don't want to talk about that. Move on to something. I know, else. but let me just say this to you. It doesn't I, matter. Keep, keep my family out of it, please. But what I'm saying, I'm trying to understand what brought up. Yeah, sir, I'm going to tell you once more nicely. Do not mention my parents. Do you I, understand me? I'm trying to understand what brought on the insecurity. I just, the, the, the whole, the comments from females. Oh, I see. That make you, that make you feel, you know, like, uh, like you're not worth. I mean, you know, there are people, you know, that like all over the world, all sizes that I've, I've talked to, even friends, neighbors that, that have dealt with this kind of issue with, 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 uh, with particular women as well. So it wasn't just me, but they have, they have the ability to make you feel like, you know, you know what you're not, you don't have any worth or you don't want to live anymore or 
but thank God I'm beyond that now. Like it doesn't, it's, you know, because it shows the insecurity in them and you catch more flies with honey. And I've, I've actually uh, exercised that principality lately over the last two months. And when I see that when I'm still being nice and they're cursing me out and treat me like garbage, yeah, you know, and then I'm just like, you know what? I know it's, I'm not the problem because I know I'm not a scumbag. So it makes it easier to basically reveal that they got the problem, yeah. and that's what makes it easier for me to go. I don't care no more. So in a way, I got to thank them for that because that made, they made me motivated me to say I don't care no more. That's right. How do you see women? How do you see women? Well, they're all different. You, you don't judge one person on a whole group of people. Obviously, there's good and bad and everything. But um, like I said, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not looking for anything, like I said. You know, uh, they meet me in public. They want to take pictures. I mean, I'll be on the highway. I see people taking photographs in their car. It's insane, <laughs> but I'll take photographs and stuff with them. But you know, I'm not looking for like any particular person or nothing. Like yeah. That. So as you a know? result of your of that video going viral, you're having a great life now. Yeah, I mean, at least uh, you know we haven't reached the potential we want, but we'll get there. But compared to uh, you know, any, uh, you know, future endeavors will get there. But yeah, right now compared to the past, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a highlight of my life. You know, I mean, how many people get to meet uh, Lenny Dyson, you know, you so. made, uh, uh, the news again, uh, uh, um, you were arrested area in uh, New York park for wasn't, fighting. I wasn't, I wasn't arrested. I didn't get no tickets. I didn't go to jail. What happened there? Well, there was a, I always hang out down at this, at this marina on Long Island. I have a bunch of friends and this one guy, he, I known him for a couple of months. He uh, is kind of wacky, but I didn't know that he had the side of him. And we were, he's always, he was always like antagonistic and stuff, you know, Hey, yo, midget will smack me in the back of the head thinking it's funny, but he goes overboard. And when you tell him to stop, he's the type of person that doesn't know when to stop. So the day that that happened and I had two friends and a full dock full of people who witnessed it. So we're both sitting next to each other in beach chairs and you're kind of in an inclined position like this. So you can't get up easy. So he starts, goes, Hey, you want some bug spray on your leg out of nowhere? And the wind burnt my eye. I told him to stop. He did it again. It burnt my eye again. And he had a soda can. So I started to push it like stop. He gets up, he leans on me with his hand and proceeds to dump soda all over me. Then as I get up, he punches me. I don't know if you could still see the, Oh yeah, I can. Where, yeah. That's where he got me right here. And the low life piece of garbage that he is. <laughs> and I tried helping him clean his car. We were going to help sell his car, merchandise. We raised a little bit of money, gave him the money. I didn't take a cent. And this is how he repays me. So he gets up, hits me, throws a chair at me. I throw it back. And that's when I grab my bat and I got handcuffed. And my friends saw the whole thing. And even when I, I just found out from my friend that witnessed it, uh, Romeo, you know, Romeo the Romancer, uh, we were on talk shows with him, my, one of my best friends, when I was in the car. He supposedly said to the guy that antagonized me, he goes, don't even press charges. He goes, you started it. So the guy that antagonized me said, no, I won't. And then a few days before that happened, I just found out from another friend, I'm not going to disclose his name, he, I found out that that guy that antagonized me was talking behind my back. And the guy said, why don't you shut your effing mouth? I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so the guy's kooky, man. Yeah. Uh, amazing. So is yeah. it true, uh, Chris? So that I'm telling him to stop, and he's burning my eye. Not directly, and he still doesn't listen, and you're burning my eye. So, like, <laughs> what the hell? You know? Amazing. Yeah. So, and, is it? And I see, I see the news clips how they, you know, start the book from the middle to the end. Yeah. And, and I'm watching the video, like, shut up, you two idiots. Yeah. I'm like, you don't even know the whole freaking story. You weren't there, so shut up. Ah, <laughs> that's right. The nerve for people. And so and how they edit stuff, it makes me sick. It I makes know. Me look like a villain. Did the cops really make fun of your height or that yeah. made up too? The one guy in front of me, he was like, asked me how tall I am. And the driver says, dude, don't do that. My partner's 5'1". And they said, shut your effing mouth. I cursed him out the whole way there. The guy, the guy <laughs> in the passenger seat lied about 25 years old and he's a rookie cop. And then they're all taking photos of each other at the hospital. I could see him through the door with the window. Like, yeah, we got the bagel guy here. I'm like, wow, this is all a joke to you, ain't it? Amazing. Ain't it? And I, I, I was cursing him out the whole way there. Uh, Amazing. Like, and I asked him 10 times. Here's the most important thing. I asked him 10 times. I says, if you saw this whole thing <coughs> and you saw him hit me first, okay, why isn't he in handcuffs? And guess what, sir? They had nothing to say. And then that's when I said, you two, I'm making you look like 
excuse me, but I have to say what I said verbatim. Yeah. But it says, you two, are, I'm making you two look like stupid assholes. You know that? And they just <laughs> didn't say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Amazing. Imagine that. <laughs> and, even, and even the doctor at the hospital, it's with, she shook her head and goes, unbelievable. I says, yeah, that's our cops. Nice, huh? Right. Amazing. Chris, you have a, I've read that you uh, have a fight coming up with Lenny. What's Lenny's last uh, name? Deist Lenny Dystra, right? Lenny Dystra, yes. And tell us about that. Uh, what exactly is it that you need? When is that? How can we see it? All that good stuff. Well, it's on September 28th at the showboat. I believe it's a 7.30 a.m. beginning. No, in a, it, I'm sorry? I think it's p.m. P yeah, 7.30, of course, 7.30 p.m. at the showboat in Atlantic City, uh, September 28th. Uh, you can get in touch with uh, my media company as far as the links, how to get tickets if interested, blah, 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 blah. Send those over. And he'll send those over to you. Okay. <laughs> yes, we already had a face-off in... Um, in Philadelphia a couple of days ago, and uh, yeah, but it's 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 very real. It's it's game on, and uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. Well, it's I, raining, ready to go. I wish you well in that fight. Have any Thank other you, doors in the entertainment world or anywhere opened up for you as a result of all this? Uh, you could speak to my media team about that. Yeah, we're getting other bookings, but you know, nothing set in stone yet. Right other bookings, on. but not, other bookings, but nothing set in stone yet. Right on, man. Um, I also read, I don't know how true this is, because you know people say all kinds of things, but I read that you call yourself a prophet, and yes. you compare yourself to Martin Luther King. <laughs> yes, I'm also, I call myself the ultimate warrior of social media as well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> But yes, I am the modern day prophet. I always, uh, my friend was a DJ one time, and he put a mix of Martin Luther King's voice in it. it was This was in 94, and I'm like, and he surprised me with it. I was like, wow. I always love listening to him talk. I, I would have loved to meet him, man. It was that was like amazing, man. You know. So he was an amazing guy. So what were you doing for work and all that before all this happened? What were you doing in life? Well, I, I actually well, I uh out of I'll tell you. So out of high school I went to a trade school in the city for video across from the Maury Povich Show in Manhattan. Then I got a two year degree in liberal arts from uh Nassau Community College. Then I went to Hofstra. I got certified as a web designer and a graphic artist. Then I got, uh, I became a certified uh, court reporter, freelance court reporter. Then I got my bachelor's, my last two years as a paralegal online. And now I currently have uh, my own cleaning company as well. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. I have you, a couple more questions. We're running out of time. But I want to know, yeah. as a result of going through all this stuff with different women growing up and now right, your life, right. do you, how do you, do you hate women? How do you feel about women? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't hate them. You know. I mean, again, you, you can't generalize for everybody. There's a lot of good and bad everywhere. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I mean. And let's face it. I mean, women are attractive. I love women. You know. I'm. Uh, you know. But just a few that have been tensions from the get go. I just don't want nothing to do with them because they're. What good are they doing? Nothing. <laughs> so. Uh, Chris, we're celebrating Men's History Month this month. August is Men's History Month. I started this last year, so this is our second year. Okay. I want to know from you. Thank you, man. I want to know from you, what is a man? Oh, you mean like a definition of a man? Like yeah, a real man? other than the body. I miss women that. <laughs> yeah, it's actually. Uh, other than the body parts and all that, what is a man? No, not, no, not so much so. Um, it's, it's more or less like. Well, I found that once they start getting over 40, it's like the stuff that mattered in high school fades away. It's mainly because, you know, when you're in high school, you're not making a real living, but it's mainly, let's all be real here, income. Uh, you know, as long as you're trying or working, uh, education helps, uh, values, morals, being a good supporter, uh, you know, basically treating them nice with respect. Act like a gentleman and all that, but if they still mistreat you, then it's not meant to be, and just cut the rope. I mean, why be miserable? But, oh, well, I always start out trying to be a gentleman, be nice, and and I guess maybe they saw that as a weak spot, yeah. unfortunately. And I, I put my foot down. I'm like, that that's it. Come they on. do see that as weakness for sure. Yeah, uh, and, wh and what sucks is is that when a lot of that happens, eventually it turns you into sometimes a monster where you like. You don't want to be that person. Right. You know? And it's like, I'm not that way, but you they brought that out in me. Amazing. And, uh, so and, would then you... when the, and then when the and then when the anger goes away, 
Uh, I go back to myself again, and I try to be a gentleman again. But uh, eventually, I'm going to stop hitting the reset button. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so would you consider yourself a beta uh, male or an alpha male? No, definitely not an alpha male. Maybe by attitude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm in okay shape, but I'm, I'm no Hulk or anything like that. But, uh, you know, but I'm kind of stocky. I used to uh, get trained by a guy uh, years ago. I actually went trained in the A.B. Fisher gym. I met oh. him a week before that all happened. But, yeah. Yeah, I used to power lift. Uh, I used to squat uh, and uh, deadlift 250 pounds. But I was 18 years old then, so I'm 45 now. So, yeah. But, Amazing. Chris, yeah. it's an honor to meet you. How can people get to your website or keep up with what you're doing? Uh, yeah, Instagram, Twitter. Instagram. Well, my Instagram is the angry bagel guy. <laughs> and Twitter was, I'm sorry, it was uh, the Chris Morgan, the one. Chris Morgan, the one. Number one, correct? Yep. For Twitter. And what was the other one? Sorry. Uh, Facebook is. Facebook is. One, uno momento, por favor. The angry, bagel guy. <laughs> the angry Bagel Guy for Facebook. Amazing. It's an honor to meet you, Chris, and I wish you well. If awesome. you're ever in Los Angeles, I want you to come into the studio. Awesome. Awesome. I would appreciate that. Thank you. And it was great meeting you as well, sir. All right. God bless you, Chris. God bless you, too, sir. All right, buddy. All right. Chris Morgan, folks, check him out. The Bagel Boss, even though he can't use that name anymore, I think. Amazing. Absolutely amazing.